Vince Maniachi. Who is that? I am the horrifying David Graves. Something not quite human. This time around, we're reviewing a classic, classic horror film, John Carpenter's The Fog. A study in unrelenting terror. First, I gotta say, this is made by the amazing company, Scream Factory. And we are going to have quite a lot of Scream Factory movies this month because they're just releasing so much spectacular stuff. So you're going to be like on Scream Factory overload before the end of October. So what do they show on the front of the Blu-ray case, Dave? This is why Scream Factory is so incredible. And sometimes the company won't allow them to do this because they want them to use the original poster. But a lot of times they will hire an artist to recreate the cover of the DVD and that's what they did here with the fog and it's absolutely amazing looking it is I I really like the cover of the of the fog even if you don't like this great artwork which is crazy if you don't the cover is reversible so they do have the original cover on here as well and here it is which is the actual poster art which I never liked I thought that was such a stupid cover poster for The Fog, so Jamie Lee Curtis trying to keep the door closed. Even though Jamie Lee Curtis is in the film, she's not the main person to be focused on. So first of all, Vince, the transfer of The Fog. Wow. Absolutely spectacular. S stunning. I haven't seen this film in years, literally in years. The last time I actually saw it was on television and it was so dark and so foggy, actually, it was really hard to watch. And I didn't really get into the film because it was too dark to see it. The thing okay. is, that they do show, you know, on some of the extras here, they kind of show parts of the movie. And what the, what the parts of the movie they show are just so grainy. And there's lines going through it, and there's specks and, and scratches and dirt and hair. And, and that's kind of like how you're used to watching it because it's always showing it on television and whatnot. The thing is, you watch this on Blu-ray, you're almost spoiled by it because you're like, you know, it's spectacular and incredible looking, but then it's like you see what you're used to watching and you're like, oh my God, you know, that's the way I used to watch this movie? <laughs> exactly. You can totally tell the difference between the two. So let's get right into the extras here. Uh, two commentaries on here, one by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Again, in low-budget filmmaking, you have to uh, make certain concessions that you're not able to do if you have a high budget. We had a little over a million dollars, so uh, a lot of the film has to be uh, rather simply planned out and simply done. Which I think this one was an actual original commentary that they had done a while back. John Carpenter knows how to do commentary, like the master of commentary. It was really entertaining. You wanted to sit there and listen to it forever. He's just amazing at commentary. They're actually sitting there watching the film. That's the way commentary should be. I hate when they do the interview thing and they clip pieces of interviews together. And now they have a second commentary on here, which is a brand new commentary. Wow, got straight to the business. <laughs> Took oh, care of the business. Golly. Now he's pretending to be interested in her artwork. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've already. It's. Uh, what is that? I'm surprised thing? we're not smoking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I gotta say that this one slightly disappointed me. It was a fun commentary to listen to. It's like it didn't really add anything to the movie. I enjoyed it. I just. I don't know if it necessarily blew me away, but I enjoyed it. And it was fun to listen to Tom Atkins again, but he's not actually all the way through it. Actually, the one that takes over the spotlight in this commentary is Tommy Lee Wallace. 
So the very first extra on here, I'm going to I'm going to come out and say say it straight, Vince. This is probably one of the best extras I've seen on any DVD. Really? You ready? I hope you're getting the fog outside. First foggy day, and I think it bodes very well for this interview. I mean, I just was blown away by this by this interview with Jamie Lee Curtis. It's called uh, My Time with Terror. And she just goes out and doesn't hold anything back and just straight up, you know, talks about the movie and and how much she doesn't like it and how th how she thinks it's horrible and about her career of being a scream queen and about all these horrible movies she made just to make money off of them and I just loved it. I mean, I was just blown away by this interview. Fantastic. And and she's just she's the type of person you just don't mind listening to. She could talk about anything. And I mean, she could talk about the most boring subject you could possibly talk about, like grass growing. And it would still be interesting. Did you say rat throwing? Grass growing. Everything's going crazy. Rat throwing? Rat throwing. Dean of Darkness with Dean Cundy. I became interested in cinematography um, very early on. I mean, I, I was interested in movies since I was a little kid in grammar school. So I wanted to go to film school, and um, I, in, in film school I studied cinematography. This one was all right. I didn't... It didn't really necessarily blow me away. I really liked it. I thought it was pretty entertaining myself. Um, like you said, he talks about Halloween, he talks about the fog, he talks about The Thing, Escape from New York, Big Trouble in Old China. I mean, he worked on all these movies. It's not horrible. Fear on film inside the fog. I wanted to make a film about uh, the fog as, as a character, as a force of evil. Now, this one was actually featurette that they filmed back in 1980, I guess. Yeah, this was a great flashback. I, this was fantastic. A lot of fun to watch. You see how it was at that moment. and it, that So that was really kind of cool. They had John Carpenter interview and Deborah Hill. They even had uh, Jamie Lee Curtis on there. And they even had Adrian Barbeau. And even Janet Lee was on there. It kind of blew me away watching it because I'm sitting there thinking... Man, when did they film this? And then once you, you start watching it, I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. I remember things like that. <laughs> I remember clothes being that way. It's, it's almost like a, you know, a window in time. You can see when the movie was coming out or just came out and they were talking about it. It's just a really great, fantastic extra. All right, the next feature on this Blu-ray disc is Tales from the Mist, Inside the Fog. I think the fascination with ghost stories is that we love to be scared. Now, as with the retro interviews, here are more recent interviews. It's because it was really weird to see John Carpenter and Deborah Hill and all this stuff back in the 80s. And here he is, you know, with gray hair, he's bald, and here, you know, Deborah Hill's gained all his weight, and Adrian Bobo, our bow is all wrinkled, and so it's like, okay, here's 80s, and boom, here's today. But also, I enjoy making people jump. I wanted to do a two-picture deal with me over there. I know when something is going to be scary. It was an amazing first time we were kids. He wrote a role with me in mind. That was the scariest movie I, I've ever seen. And you know it's going to move, and when it does, you <laughs> That we love to be scared. Another great extra here. Well, one thing John Carpenter does is he does his own film scores. Stay away from the fog. He actually had wrote something out originally, some musical score out for this originally, and it didn't work with the film at all, so he scrapped the entire thing and then did redid it. And it was just really fascinating stuff, great stuff. Next up we have The Fog, storyboard to film. Now, Basically all this is, is you see a drawing of, of the movie, and then above it is you see the movie itself playing, so it's comparing the storyboard to the film, basically. And it's not the whole movie this way, it's only like parts of it. Nothing spectacular on this one though. 
Yeah, no, it's not that great, but it, you know, it's it's awesome they included it on here. And now, as we all, you know, become used to, for those who get the Scream Factory uh, Blu-rays, is horror, horrors, horrors howl ground. <laughs> Rat throwing pores. How awesome is that? That's the opening shot. This is the opening shot of the fog. Actually, all the stuff in the foreground, you see the trees and stuff, as, as it pans up, those were actually faked. And it's always entertaining. I'm always looking forward to this extra on the Screen Factory disc. I find it always very cool. You know, it makes you want to actually go to these places and go see them. So next we have outtakes from the film. Nancy, please. I said Nancy. This was actually really cool. I liked seeing all the outtakes and all the, the gags and, and whatnot. A lot of fun. So is rat throwing. Special effects takes. Nowadays, of course, they would do it all with what, Vince? CGI. Exactly. And th these are the practical effects that Dave and I absolutely love and wish they would do more in recent movies. Alright, so now we have theatrical trailers. 100 years ago, between midnight and one, something unknown came out of the fog. Now it has returned. Oh, Jesus. I gotta tell you, when I was a kid in the 80s and I saw these commercials, they scared the crap out of me, Vince. Yeah, I was about to say that. I was about to say, it, the TV spots are a little more interesting because that was something you saw on television when it was coming out at that moment. And you you remember that, you know, being scared, going, oh my gosh, that looks like a creepy movie. And you, you couldn't wait to see it. The photo gallery, which is obviously photos from behind the scenes, and then we get more storyboards, which I think are basically the same storyboards as the um, other thing that was on here. The storyboard to film thing. On top of all these extras, this is a crazy amount of extras on this disc. It's a crazy amount of extras. There's one more thing here on the disc that's really a lot of fun. Okay, where are you going with this one, Dave? There is an Easter egg on this disc. Okay, I might not have seen that then. Do you want to pause it and see if you can find it? All right, Vince, so, so, uh, so did you find it? Yeah, I found it, Dave. And I don't want to give it away, but there is a really cool Easter egg on here. We will give you a hint as to where to look for it, and that is it's in the bonus features. Yeah, and it's real fun. If you're a kid growing up in the 80s, you'll remember this thing. In all, let me just say that this is probably up to this point, because I haven't watched a few other... Scream Factory DVDs that have yet to come out, but as in the ones that I've owned so far, I would say The Fog is absolutely my favorite, favorite Scream Factory DVD right now. And I would actually have to agree with you. I, I mean, this is everything that a fan would want. I would have to give The Fog DVD, all the extras, the picture, the quality, a after watching all of this and, and doing this review and, and, and going through all this thing, I, I would... Uh, I just have to give it a golden machete! It's awesome. <laughs>